You're watching the Wellness Herald, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about minimally invasive facial rejuvenation, new breakthroughs. And uh, with us, we have an expert on the topic, board certified dermatologist, Dr. Khan. Dr. Khan, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. All right, now we're gonna talk about three things. Yes. And we'll talk about minimally invasive facial rejuvenation. Yes. Uh, we'll talk about liposuction, kind sure. of what's new, sure. and then Mohs therapy yes. for people, I guess, with skin cancer. Yes, people for skin cancer, yes. So, so for people that don't know you, tell me a little bit about your practice. What are the different uh, procedures you do? My practice is basically uh, uh, revolves around two different categories. One of them is the kind of patients who come to see me for medical purposes, which is around, all around skin cancer, annual skin cancer screening, pigmented skin lesions, molds, nevi, spots that do not necessarily go away, and we categorize them as like pre-cancer or about to become a cancer and then we do the most surgery for them or we do excisions and we remove them for uh, for the better uh, cure rate. And the other half of it is all about cosmetic surgery. Cosmetic surgery is involving anywhere from completely non-invasive to minimally invasive to a little bit more aggressive and then involving invasive surgery. So, so you're, like a I mean, people call you a cosmetic yes, dermatologist? Yes, cosmetic, cosmetic surgeon and a most surgeon, okay, yes. Good. Those are my two subtitle headings, yes. All right, so the different procedures you do in your practice the are? The different types of procedures I do so as do, far as the, the is, I do the most surgeries, which is based on the skin cancer, and then there is cosmetic surgical part, which is a, more along the lines of, let's say, if it's non-invasive or completely in non-invasive types of techniques, then we do techniques for um, facial skin tightening. Right. That is not necessarily limited to the face. The neck can also be involved in it. Uh, these days, I've also perfected a technique for neck a knee lift, and I do treatments for sagging Knees. And that knees. yes, and that it can also be applied to elbows, can also be applied to thighs on the front, and then also uh, moving on to minimally invasive surgical techniques. Those include minimally invasive fillers, Botox, and then lasers combined together. And my acronym for them is BFF. I think it uh, BFF, B, okay. BFF, and B stands for Botox, F stands for fillers, and the other F stands for the fractional devices, which could nice. either be your fractionated laser treatments, could be fractionated radio frequency treatments, it could also be fractionated other devices that are commonly used for skin tightening or for collagen remodeling. So if you combine all the three together, you get a very nice outcome and many a times we're able to take 10 years off of a person's is face. Is that right? Yes. Without cutting, without surgery, Without cutting, obviously. the key is maintenance. So if a patient, as long as they understand that none of this is permanent, you can, uh, the more you do it, the less often you require, but okay. there is something to be said about how often you have to do them and how often you keep up with it. And you do this, right? Yes. I mean, I, do, I, we, you I do your this. Age. You look yes. younger than your age. Well, thank you for that. And, but there is, there is a reason you don't behind really it. You have pores on your face that I'm looking at. Well, there is, is a that reason safe behind not that. not to have pores on your face? It is, there is no reason for pores <laughs> to be on your face. Your face is supposed to be, and your skin right. is supposed to be pore less. Right. However, pores are a result of chronic aging and okay. also think that some, sometimes sun damage can actually lead to them. Sometimes people, they have underlying rosacea a little bit, right. and that contributes to the central facial porosity. And that's what we see as women, they age mostly into their 30s, leading into the 40s. And then if you act up early, you start the treatment for the rosacea early on, you invite all of the kinds of minimally invasive procedures. So what's hot right now, by the way? Okay, so the, we have you on the program. Yes. And, and you're also an assistant clinical professor. Yes, I am an, assist yeah, an assistant clinical professor. Yes, I do train residents at Wild Cornell Medical uh, Center. It's in New York on Upper East Side. And then also I do surgical clinic with them and I have laser privileges in the hospital and I have uh, uh, admitting privileges at the New York Presbyterian Hospital. Yes. Okay. So, I so do what's the, hot right now? I mean, what, uh, what, what are people the, Want and, and what do you like doing? People are opting more towards procedures that are minimally invasive. They can come in, get them done, and be going and go about with their day. They do not want to take time off. The other types of procedures that they may be okay with are along the lines of minimally invasive, which includes your injection treatments and also laser treatments. Who, who's your typical patient that's coming in? For typical patient this? ranges in age anywhere between 30 to 45. Those are my very day to day basis patients, and those come in nothing miraculous, nothing a major kind of a face sort of a look, just trying to look younger, more youthful, and fresher for their age. Not a wow factor. 
that's a typical patient of mine that I see mostly seeking treatments for rejuvenation. What about men? Is it, is it mostly women right now? I have 50-50. Really? My patient population is 50% men and 50% women. And men, their requirements are a little bit different than as compared to what you would do for a female. A facial profile of a man is a little bit different than that from a female okay. facial profile. So if you, if you look at a female face, you cannot make it exactly the way you would do a female face and translate it into a facial architecture for a man for rejuvenation. What they're looking for in case of men, what they really want to do is a little bit of a brow lift and they're much more concerned about their chin. Do you do brow lifts? I do minimally invasive brow lifts okay. and I do neck liposuction and I do neck lifts. Those are most men, that's what they want. And they don't want to have a scar. They don't want to have a do minimally invasive. you have an operating invasive. room right there in your yes, office? Yes, we have an operating Isn't room. Isn't that right? Good yes. For you. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. It's accredited operating room, and that's where we do all our minimally invasive surgeries. Some of these surgeries do not necessarily require you to go under general okay. anesthesia or any, even a sedate, sedative uh, type of an environment. So we can easily do them in just an outpatient basis. Most of the neck procedures where the scar is less than two millimeters, you will never see it. So that kind of a scar and that type of a minimally invasive surgery, you can do it under when the patient is awake and they see the results before they leave the office. Okay. So they're now, very now, satisfied. Now what's changed? Now we've, we've had limited conversations on yes. the telephone, but, but I talk to certain doctors and say, what we can do now, Yes. compared to just five years ago, 10 yeah. years ago, is completely different. That means we get much better results. Yes. Explain the, that to me. And the, do you agree the, with that? The, I completely agree with you. What we were able to accomplish 10 years ago, it's not, it's a way more than what we can accomplish today. And part of the reason why that is happening is because our understanding of how a person ages from head to toe, inside out and outside in has changed completely. We know better what the science is behind it. We know better what the skin is doing as you're aging. We also know better how a person ages depends upon their work environment, their habits, where they grew up and what type of a skin they carry and how much vacation they've had over the years. Okay. All of these factors, they play a very major role as to what you're going to pick and choose for your patients to give them what they desire. And as our understandings have changed, the procedures have evolved at the same time. Technology has become so much better. Where do you stand very, with technology in your practice? I, th I think, uh, well, in our practice, we have lasers that are mostly fractionated devices, which includes the Fraxel. I was involved, in, I was on the part of the team that invented the Fraxel laser. And I know a lot about the fractionated CO2, which is much, much different than the CO2 laser that used to be involved. And many years ago, it, we would burn people's faces off. Now people walk out <laughs> with just like a little bit of a pink okay. that lasts I'm laughing for, because you said yeah. burn their faces yeah. off. Yeah, but, so, but, but that was the, yeah, that okay. was, that was because that's what we knew. We did not know better. And we ended up in so many problems, so many side effects, very, bad adverse outcomes. And people, those who did well, they actually did very, very well, but that fraction was very small. So that's why we have swayed away from those laser treatments. And now we are focused more into safer treatments that can be done on essentially any skin color, any age group, no matter how old or young a person is, because our understanding about these devices has changed. And the other important thing is minimally invasive tightening technologies, which are along the lines of radio frequency devices. Okay. Those are your starting off from a simple device, which is very commonly used, pretty much many office carries, let's say like Thermage. They're moving on into fractionated radio frequency devices. And those are so many companies so that are making it right now. What do you mean? Tightening, it happens because these devices, first of all, are not going to penetrate the surface of your skin. You just place them, you just feel a little bit of a heat. And the, this heat, it goes underneath the surface of a skin and it creates a little bit of like a warmth environment. Mm -hmm. And as the skin heals from that warm tissue, it builds up a little bit more collagen. It's like a stimulation, like a skin that's been sleeping for a while. It's like a little kick. Go on, right. make more collagen, and then you start to look better. It takes a few treatments. Obviously, it's not a surgical, it's not a substitute for surgery. It takes a few treatments to be able to get the results, but people like it. And, you, and we're going to move on to liposuction mm -hmm. for sure. the sake of time, but who would you like to see more of in your practice? I would like to see... type of patient or... I would like to see more people coming in earlier in their 30s and well into their, before they get into the age of 60s, because that's when we can do so much that okay. procedures like strictly invasive procedures like facelift, and neck lifts that we used to be very long scars, mm -hmm. that can be avoided, can be put off for another 10, 20 years. If you start to work today, you can safely put those procedures off for a long time. Okay, liposuction, big part of your practice. Yes. Uh, you know, I've you know, look, looked at your, uh, your, your, your CV here yes. and also your website. Yes. Uh, what's new in, in liposuction? I mean, wh what why is, is it better now? 
than it was before. Liposuction, first of all, is still the number one cosmetic surgery requested in the United States. Right, okay. and, and do you then do a lot other, of it every week? I do, I do a lot of liposuction, and that includes starting from simple neck liposuction all the way to complete body contouring to something a little bit more invasive, like cellulite treatments. All of them, their, their basis is basically liposuction. So um, the liposuction, how it has become so much more popular and at the same time also more cost effective is because we don't need, first of all, general anesthesia to perform liposuction. It's done while the patients are awake. That cuts down your cost. That cuts down the amount of personnel that is required to do the procedure and okay. also patient complications afterwards. Number two, it, our understanding upon based upon how the fat is distributed in the body, how it's going to change over time. If the patient gains weight, becomes pregnant, or goes through certain times of life where they are either be eating a little bit more or less, or all of these factors, they have to be taken into account. And when you think about it from that point of view, and you do a person's liposuction, you're not basically liposuctioning them, you're contouring them. Okay. You're sculpting them. And when you sculpt a person, then the chances of them having a great result as a result of this procedure are very high. Do you like to do? I procedure? love to do this. Why I, is it I hear a lot of doctors behind the scenes, and the patients seem to know this, I think, a lot of doctors don't like liposuction. They yes, say, Randy, I don't want to come on your program talking about lipo because I'll be stuck doing lipo all day. Yeah, it's... So it, why do you like it? I like it. I, I feel like it's it's a big part of me because I used to be a sculpture artist before I went into medical school. Oh, really? Yes, and I did art for a long time, and this is before I ever thought that I was going to become a doctor. And once I went into this whole field, I, instead of sculpting, sculptures, I sculpt people, and I take nice. a lot of pride in doing that, and it's a, it's very gratifying for me. It is a very time-consuming procedure sometimes if you have to sculpt somebody's whole body. Yes, it takes time, and my way of doing it is that I do, do not put patients to sleep so they're awake, and then the final touches, I do them when they are standing up so that I can contour them in the way that they would look at themselves in the mirror, not necessarily when they're laying flat. Things change when you're laying flat versus when you're standing. So it's a little bit of a difference there. So it's um, it, you have to really love what you do. Okay. Otherwise, it will become very difficult to translate that into a good result. And that's the message I want to give to my patients is that I absolutely take a lot of pride and good. I love what I do. And that's how I want my patients to feel about themselves when they leave us. Now, we're going to go to uh, move on to, for the sake of time, mm -hmm. Mohs surgery. But, yes. but, but first, what should somebody look for? In, 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 a, in a doctor that is going to be doing these minimally invasive facial rejuvenation, lasers, Botox, fillers, and we didn't even talk about Botox and fillers, which is a big part of your practice. Yes. But what should they look for? Because there's medical spas, you know, med spas, yes. spa, spa, spa. Yes. Everybody's doing it. Not everybody, but it seems like everybody's yes. doing it. So what should they very, look for? Very, very good question. Number one, first of all, do not ever settle for the cost. These procedures cost money. There is material involved, there is laser devices involved. So if somebody sells you a procedure and they sell it to you for a cheap, there is always a question where they're getting these materials from, number one. And number two, always look for board certified doctors, including either dermatologists or plastic surgeons, those who really know what the face is all about. And even among the dermatologists, I have to say that not all dermatologists, they specialize and they, okay. they take that as part of their practice, that they will include facial rejuvenation as part of them. There are certain specialties of, of dermatology where people they go and they get special training in it for example like cosmetic surgeries or procedural dermatology fellowships those are where you actually study a face a wrinkle as how to correct it what are the different ways of correcting it can minimally invasive procedures even help you or not or is surgery your best option unless a doctor talks to you about each and every one of those and okay. what the outcomes are do not settle for procedures that are t that are sold to other people at a cheaper cost and in their basements okay. or whatever okay good um, final, f we have a couple of minutes on, uh, on skin cancer and most yes. surgery. What yes. is it? How are you using it? Very good questions. First of all, I want to give a message out to my audience that sun is getting stronger and stronger with each passing day. The ozone layer is depleting and our vacation habits have changed. People, those who used to live and they were supposed to be in the colder climates, fair skin people, Irish, Scottish people, were not supposed to go and reside in Australia or live in Hawaii for the rest of their lives. Their skin is not going to be able to take it. Yes, over time you get a little bit used to sun, but understand that there is a certain level of protection factor that your skin of color contains. And if you don't have that, do not vacation or stay outside in the midday sun and okay. get yourself sunburned. Also, people have this feeling about them that if in case you have a very high SPF, you don't you don't need to be careful about sun, and that's totally wrong. SPF, all it means that how frequently you have to apply it, and all the sunscreens, always check for them. 
what kind of radiations they're protecting you from. Is it UVA, is it UVB, and how high the SPF is. If a high SPF number is very high, all it means is that you just have to apply it as frequently. Okay. But on all due respect, avoid the midday sun. And also, do not get yourself baked in the sun. There is nothing cool or fancy about it. And I want to give this message out to my audience that fair is the new tan. And you can get really? other cut. Okay. That's that's what I want to tell my people, <laughs> patients, is that to just be protected. And also know that sun not necessarily is going to give you, yes, it will give you a little bit of a color, but it will give you a lot of wrinkles in addition to that. So you will age much faster. You will lose your skin tone much faster. And it, all, uh, and it will not necessarily be limited to your face. It will be limited all over. So Mohs surgery. So skin cancer, sun is a, plays a very big role about it. And then Mohs is one of the techniques. It's a surgical technique that carries the highest cure rate for curing skin cancers. And this, this technique is very widely used for non-melanoma kinds of skin cancers. For example, like one of the most common cancer in the world, basal cell carcinoma. The other second one being squamous cell carcinoma. All of these, they come from sun-induced damage, chronic buildup, sunburns when you were growing up, all of these. And then it's now considered also for the treatment of melanoma cancers as well, but with a lot of caution. I do most surgery for melanoma cancers. Not everybody's trained to do that, but uh, some surgeons don't. Is this a cosmetic don't. procedure that doesn't leave marks it's, no, or it scars? No, it is not, first of all. It is not a cosmetic procedure. But I mean, is it a technique? The technique will, first of all, it, it serves two purposes. Number one, it will cure your cancer. Okay. Before you leave the office, the cancer will be gone 99.9% .9 of the time. Number two, you only remove the skin that contained the cancer and you spare the normal skin, which allows you to create and to be able to repair the defects with a minimal scarring. But will there be a scar? Yes, there will so be. So every dermatologist doesn't do this? Most? Not every dermatologist. Okay. I don't I, I don't know, and I, I'm not so sure every, every dermatologist in many states is allowed to do that, as unless you have had specialized fellowship training and you've okay. submitted a certain number of cases to the ACGME to get certified that you can do most surgery. Okay, good. Now we are out of time. Uh, final message about uh, cosmetic dermatology, liposuction, and, uh, and your practice? Come to our practice and we will make sure that we first of all treat you not necessarily as a patient but also as part of the practice because when you will go outside you will represent us and okay. we, don't, we don't sell vials of Botox or vials of syringes or of fillers or, or laser treatments, we sell results. Okay. That's the biggest message I want to tell my patients and also stay, stay sun protected. Okay, and enjoy good. life. I want to thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much. You've been watching the Wellness Hour. We're here with Dr. Khan. If you would like to see this interview again, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com and just put in Dr. Khan and she'll pop up. For now, I wish you could help. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.